Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be playing chapter 2 of The Devil's Deal book 1. It's a dream zone story. I'm hyped up about this. Let's get started. Chapter 2. The good, the bad, and the lost. You are shitting me, bro. Are you telling me you're rich now? Filthy rich. Still can't believe it's happening. And you want all of that money by buying just some damn lottery ticket? You have told the whole story to Manuel several times, but who would blame him for not believing you? I tell you man, just one ticket, and then I check it and boom, it's a jackpot! Lucky bastard, I'm happy for you man, with all my heart. If anyone deserves to get lucky with that jackpot, it's you. I'll be able to cover my father's treatment, that's a miracle. And you should not forget all the spoils of life you can now enjoy. Yoo-hoo! Parties, man! Rich chicks! For a moment, Manuel is lost in his dreamland. His eyes shine, thinking about all, the, all those things money can buy. With all the money I have won, there is little I can't afford right now. Man, you can't even take another shot at Felicia. Nah, she's rejected me already and mocked me on top of it. That was yesterday, when you were poor and today you're rich. You will see how that changes your luck with girls and their feelings for you. Come on, I don't need money to get girls. Manuel raises his hand in defeat. Alright, alright, you don't want Felicia, screw her, date someone else. Or maybe your heart craves a good girl like Carrie? You groan, trying to suppress the urge to indulge yourself in your memories of that one night of making out with her. I know that look on your face. Have you slept with her? You can't fool me. Bro, I know something's up between you two. Best friends can be annoying nosy at times. You know how it goes. If you ask no questions, I'll tell you no lies. You know what that means, right? I'm going to imagine things a lot worse than what happened. Shut up, man! Gentlemen don't announce their conquests. I'm no gentleman, and I'm definitely going to imagine you two getting all hot and dirty now. By all means, bro, as long as you keep it to yourself. No promises here. Okay. Alright, so. That's it. Trust your best friends to tease you to their satisfaction. Now he's going to remind me of fa failing to get the girl for the rest of my life. Dad! You look cheerful, what's up son? I've got it all sorted out. I've got the money we need for your treatment. It's going to be alright now. Where did you get that kind of money? I'll explain everything later. It's irrelevant now. What matters is that it's legal and we must immediately start your treatment. I've checked the best hospitals. That doctor was right. Dr. Foreman is the best in his field. Son, we need to be realistic on this matter. Dr. Foreman is said to work miracles, Dad. If we proceed with inpatient treatment immediately, he'll put you back on your feet. I'm speechless. I mean, this is the best news I've heard in years. But you're going to have to explain to me where you got this kind of money. Yeah, luck is on our side. I know it. Doctor, please, just hear me out. Nothing you tell me will change my mind, young man. For the moment, our hospital is completely booked. But my father's life is at stake. Of course, and so are the lives of hundreds of other patients who are on the waiting list. As a doctor, I'd love to accept every single person who needs a treatment. Especially those who need it urgently, right? Right. However, as the head of department, I must take difficult decisions. There are several other doctors I can personally recommend. I'll make the calls myself. But you're the best. This is a big overstatement. I can assure you my colleagues are as good. Your father will be in good hands. Convinced Dr. Foreman. My father's coughing fits are getting worse. His doctor said that he needs immediate inpatient treatment. And he will receive it at another hospital. However, if we put him on a waiting list, it may jeopardize his recovery chances. Then do something, please. Young man, are you asking me to choose your father 
over my other patients, I'm afraid that's impossible. Maybe there are others whose condition is not as bad. My father needs you to save his life. I repeat, so does each of my patients. You are left with no options but to leave the doctor's office. Thank you for your time, doctor. It feels like the whole world is falling apart around you. The weight of distress and disappointment is unbearable. There must be some way. I just need to find it. On your way out of the reception hall, you almost bump into a gentleman in a suit. I'm sorry, sir. You jump as you hear a familiar, calm voice. I can see that even wealth has not changed the frown on your face, young Nirban. Milton, good afternoon. I'm sorry, I didn't see it was you. What is with that grim look? I trust you are in good health? I am, but the doctor refused to accept my father to this hospital. What is wrong with your father? He is very sick. Immediate hospitalization can save his life, and I wish he'd receive the best treatment from a reliable doctor. How unfortunate. May I offer you my help? Come along, my friend. This might be the only shot to secure this treatment, Dad. Deny his help. I can't expect you to help me again. You've already done a lot to, for me. Are you going to deny your father the best treatment because you're too proud to ask for my help again? In fact, I'm here to pay a visit to an old friend who happens to be Dr. Foreman that you need. Oh, your friends are the doctor? Indeed, I am. What a coincidence, right? Too much of a coincidence. I shall advise you to wait for me here, young Nirban. Let me see what I can do for you. Sure, thanks. You watch Milton kick the door to Dr. Foreman's office open without a knock. He walks in and closes the door behind him. It's going to be fine. He'll help me, I know it. Five minutes later, the door opens again. The problem is solved, young and urban. I wish your father a prompt recovery. Wow, I don't know what to say. A simple thank you shall suffice for the time being. Right, because this favor adds to the one I already owe him. Now come in, the doctor will talk to you again. All the color has drained from Dr. Foreman's face. There is definitely something that scares him about Milton. I'm extremely sorry, Nirban. I believe there was a terrible misunderstanding. We'll be ready to admit your father to our hospital today. There will be no delay. I'm so grateful, doctor. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be of service. Now, if you'll excuse me. You walk out of Dr. Foreman's office and walk downstairs in silence. Milton, I don't know how to thank you for this. Worry not, my young friend. You will get your chance to thank me. And until then, what, whenever you are in trouble or need any kind of assistance, do not shy away from contacting me. Oh, you've already done so much. That's nothing. We are friends, young Nirban. That's what friends do. Friends. He called Foreman his friend too. I wonder if that's the type of friendship that I've gotten myself into. Here's my card. Call me whenever you need me, day or night. Wow, devil. Once everything is arranged, you're back home together with Manuel. You help your father pack for the hospital. Dad, did you pack everything? The taxi will be here at any moment. Nirban, son, stop worrying. I'm not traveling to the other side of the world. If I need anything, I'll give you a call. Yeah, you're right, Dad. Relax, man. You're totally panicking now. I'll visit you every day, alright? And you can call me anything. Right, you've told me this several times already. It feels like you're the responsible parent here, and I'm the child. I didn't mean it like that, sorry. Hope I'm not putting too much. You should have some fun while I'm away. Now we're talking, Mr. W. By all means, you should host some parties with some other kids from college. Or whatever else you kids do these days. Trust me, Mr. W, you don't want to know everything. As long as you don't burn the house down or drink yourself to death, just have fun, you hear me? Dad, we won't have time for parties. 
Manuel and I have a lot of work to do. It scares me when you talk like an adult, son. Hey, why can't we party? What's the work we need to do anyway? Well, someone promised to help me repair Dad's car, remember? Right. Mr. W, you've got nothing to worry about. By the time you're home, your ride will be as shiny as new. You see the minivan in your driveway? Your father throws an anxious glance around. I can only imagine how scary this must be for him. Alright, boss. Take good care of yourselves. And don't do anything I wouldn't do. Oh, that's gotta be a very long list, Mr. W. How about we just promise to do nothing illegal? Bye, Dad. Listen to what the doctors tell you, alright? I'll visit you tomorrow. Thank you for everything, son. You and Manuel wave goodbye. You stand on your porch until minivan turns the corner and disappears from your view. Well, time to throw out parties, bro. Not yet, man. Come to the backyard first. I've got a surprise for you. For me? Can't wait to see how Manuel will do it. Alright, man. Now you close your eyes and open your mouth. Not happening. Last time I was asked to do that in kindergarten. Well, you don't want to know what I got in my mouth. I promise you'll enjoy it. Now, you speak like a perv. What the heck did he get in his mouth? <laughs> Throwing one final glance at you. Try not to swallow it, okay? It's kind of expensive. You toss the keys into his mouth. Manuel jumps as the metal clicks against his teeth. He spits it out. What the? And then he sees the keys. His eyes widen with surprise. What's this? You gesture at him to turn around. Manuel's mouth drops to the ground as he sees the shiny brand new pickup part there. No shit, you've got some true beauty here. Not me, you. Bro, this must have cost you a fortune. I've got a lot of money to spend these days. And you're the only one who stood by me at the toughest moment. Man, I'm really grateful to you. Somehow, it feels like all the worries have vanished. And you can finally allow yourself to relax and enjoy the precious moments with your friends. As soon as you think of it though, a feeling of unease makes your stomach sink. Back in college, you expect to be invisible to most of your classmates as usual. That's until you see a very excited Felicia walking around you. Hey you new bud, how are you doing today? Hello to you too. Um, what's happened to you hating me and not wanting to talk to me? That might change depending on circumstances. And what that might be, pray tell? Why am I even asking? Her sudden love for me speaks volumes. Is it true that you won the lottery jackpot? Can you get any more predictable, Felicia? No such thing. Nah, that's just a rumor. How did you put it last time? Getting annoyed with those exaggerating reports, right? What's the big deal? Just tell me the truth. I've got nothing to tell you. You don't need to. You just confirmed it by denying it. And everybody knows it anyway. Who are you trying to fool? Anyway, who did you hear that from? Does it matter? The whole college is talking about it. I can't remember who started it. But you know college rumors, they're never wrong. So is it what everyone's saying about you true too? Why would I care about those idiots say about me? Enough chit chatting. Are you going to ask me or what? Let me refresh your mind beautiful. Remember when you rejected me? Yeah, things have changed now. Right, so I'm no longer broke and now I'm worthy of your precious attention? You are starting to get it. Now you can afford to take me to a proper dinner. I would expect anything less. You notice Felix, Felicia's ex-boyfriend, has been watching you from the moment she came to talk to you. Wow, angry dude. He grits his teeth when Felicia caresses your arm in her attempt to win your affection back. Hey you, stay away from my girl. You mean your ex, right? Cause this girl here is totally flirting with me, man. Cut the crap, loser, and keep your hands off her. There is something incredibly hilarious about ex boyfriends It's so fun to pull their legs a bit. No, nothing. Do nothing. 
Whatever, man. I have nothing to explain to you. Consider yourself warned, Nirban. You realize your silence is enough torture for Felix. Better let him and Felicia sort out their issues first. Babe, we need to talk alone. I don't want to talk to you, Felix. Leave me alone. But I care about you. They still argue like a couple. I don't need to be in between them. You step aside, and that's when you realize Carrie has been watching the whole scene. It's hard to read her face, but you avoid looking into her eyes as you walk to her. Congrats, neighbor. Way to go. What did I even do? You have humiliated Felix in front of everyone. So what? How many times have they done that to me? And why would you even care? Because you're acting like an idiot. Are you so stupid that you can see that getting involved with Felicia is a bad idea? Since when have you become a relationship expert? Since you lost your mind. I don't remember asking for your advice. You'd better keep it to yourself. Yeah, you don't even have anything to say for yourself. Grow up, Nirvan. Whatever, Carrie. I'm doing perfectly fine without your nagging. Just leave me alone, Nirvan, will you? As Carrie turns to you, leave. Hey, hey, Carrie, listen, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way. You know what? You said exactly what you meant. Shit, she's not going to forgive me. I think you've said enough for one day, Nirvan. Please. Do me a favor and don't try to talk to me right now. Watching Carrie walk away, you wish she stayed and yelled at you. The silence and the pained look in her eyes are unbearable. Damn it. I've no idea how to fix this mess I've created. I need to talk to someone. You fish your phone out of your pocket and scroll down through your contacts until you'd call Manuel for advice. However, right now, something makes you hesitate. Milton is much older and has more experience in such matters. Maybe I should call him. He said I could call him anytime. A strange idea crosses your mind. You're not sure why. You catch and check the coin. I'm calling Milton then. Milton answers immediately. Milton, good afternoon. This is Nirban. Nirban, how can I help you, my friend? I kind of need your advice on something. Do you have a moment to talk? Very well. Meet me at the Abyssus Club. I shall message you the time and the address. The Abyssus Club. That's the coolest place in the city. I never thought I would ever go there. A knock at the door startles you. Who might be visiting me at this time? You were surprised to see Dr. Foreman at the door. Good afternoon, Nirban. Can I talk to you for a few minutes? Sure, doctor. Come on in. Is this about my father? Is something wrong? No, no. Your father is doing fine. I need to talk to you about someone else. Who? It takes you only a moment to realize that there is one mutual acquaintance that you and Dr. Foreman share. It's about Milton, isn't it? Indeed, you're an honest young man. I thought I should warn you about him. Milton is a dangerous man. You must stay away from him if you care about yourself and your loved ones. Why would you say that? What do you know about Milton? Uh, I'm afraid I can't answer those questions, but here is what I can tell you, Nirvan. Milton seeks profit only for himself. The help he offers will cost you dearly. Dr. Foreman is about to say something else, but he gasps in shock. His eyes are wide, fear blisters inside them. You turn around to check what he's looking at, but all you see is the mirror hanging on the wall behind you. I'm sure, say nothing. He's probably tired, I shouldn't say anything that will make him feel worse. I apologize, Nirban. I guess I simply need some rest. All these sleepless nights at work taking their toll. Um, I'm, I must leave now. Goodbye, Nirban. Be safe. You too, doctor. Please, get some rest. As you close the door behind the doctor, you smell a hint of sulfur in the air. You discard the thought immediately. Okay, so that's it. End of book two. Chapter two. I'll see you in chapter three.